size or uh, time are relative. They're different for each observer. When I move, I actually get a little smaller relative to you guys who are sitting, right? When That's bizarre. And we don't know this. We don't realize that the world is changing its shape and changing its time. Well, this is where Einstein developed the idea called space-time. That's because the world isn't the physical and time-obsessed place that, that we tend to think of it. Okay? It's something else. The relative nature of it is very important because each one of us has a relative experience. If you've ever heard somebody say they think the world revolves around them, well, guess what? Scientifically, that's true. The world revolves around each one of us relative to our observations. On a spiritual level, that's extremely important. It's why we don't judge each other, because we're all coming at truth from a different angle, which is very important. We're not supposed to judge each other because of relativity. And it's valuable physical, but it's very valuable spiritually as well. Superposition. Now, these atoms again. We, we get taught that atoms revolve or, or orbit somehow the nucleus. That's what we get taught. There's some sort of movement around. Well, scientists found out again about 100 years ago, that's not what's happening. The electron is actually in every one of those spots. There's just a certain probability that it's going to show up in any one of those particular spots. Altogether, it's 100%. But it's actually a schmear of possibilities, and, and it's not um, it's there and it's there. It's in more than one place. Well, guess what your body is made up of? These atoms and all these electrons, your body is a superposition vehicle. And you're experiencing one aspect. Now, in five seconds, I could be standing over there. Or I could stay here. Both of those things are possible. That's what's known as infinite possibilities. Hey, look, I did it. You didn't know where I was going to go, right? But I did it. Now I might move back or I might stay here. Both of those things exist as possibilities right now. Now it's way more complicated by, than that. But this is where healing happens. Each one of us has a potential future. You're going to experience the potential future that most resonates with you, which is what the observer effect is. The observer is the soul or consciousness. And when the observer interacts with the field of superposition, when they work together, it's like shooting energy through a TV. Something's going to pop up. There's going to be some experience, right? Some sort of data is on some sort of DVD, and you're going to watch, be watching a movie. Well, whenever consciousness interfect, interacts with this world of superposition, you're going to have an experience. Like a laser hitting a disc, consciousness hits this field of superposition, and you're having an experience. If you'd like it to change, you have to change the observer, right? You've got to change your mind. If we spend all our time looking at the physical world, hoping it'll change, good luck. This is why Gandhi, paraphrased, says, be the change you want to see in the world. You have to fix what's happening inside here and inside here. If you do that, again, the observer effect is a scientific phenomenon from 100 years ago. It comes from something called the double slit experiment. And in the double slit experiment, they demonstrated how electrons and these atoms are actually, in, an, in a way, observing you. They're responding to you. It's an, it's an extremely cool um, scientific study, and it demonstrates we're living in an interactive world. The world is interacting with us. Entanglement. It's been described as the most important concept in physics. Entanglement is that we are all connected. We're all energy connected. We're not physically connected. You guys are over there and I'm over here. But we are energetically connected. In entanglement, Einstein and friends was able, were able to determine that particles from a certain distance apart are able to affect each other. In their terminology, it's called spin. And if one particle, if they get one particle moving one way, the other particle will simultaneously move the other way. And these things impact each other from a distance. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. It would be the science of why things like prayer work. Because it's the energy that's connected. Again, we're not physically connected. We're energetically connected. And your heart, in effect, the energy of your heart is connected to somebody else's heart. Jesus as a healer, he didn't use sutures and stitches and medicines and whatever. He used spirit. And that's because the energy of him was connected to the energy of you. And oh, by the way, 2,000 years later, you'll see coming up in timelessness, he's still connected to Christ. Right? So time doesn't even fa factor in. Our energy is connected to each other. Scientifically speaking, it's spooky. Spiritually speaking, it makes great sense. Memento Mori, uh, this is the a concept that everything is going to die. It's 1,500 years of kind of philosophy. Uh, just in the last couple hundred years, the French philosopher uh, Camus 
in his essence to me, uh, talked about this with his philosophy in which he talked about something called absurdism. And in absurdism, the idea is really this world is um, ultimately absurd because we spend so much time working on all this physical stuff only to find ourselves dying at the end and we have to give it all up anyways. Right? And that's depressing and it is absurd. And if that's what's going on here, ugh, I'm depressed too. But once you realize that's not what's going on here, evolution of consciousness, what's going on here is your soul is evolving. There's a Bible line in which Jesus says, God uses the world as his footstool. In the Course in Miracles, it says, use the physical world to teach the spiritual world. Okay? The physical world has a purpose, but it isn't for gaining and gathering stuff. It's for developing consciousness or for evolving your soul. That's what we're here to do. Luke 2.52, Jesus, uh, it is said that Jesus grew in stature and in favor with God. Uh, if Jesus is growing in stature, well, surely we can too. What is growth? Well, that's what we're going to be going through in the spiritual stuff. It is developing the soul. It's perfecting the soul. Every single religion has some sort of concept about perfection. And that's what you're here to do. When your soul, quote unquote, isn't perfect, you're going to experience something. And that's where the chaos comes in. But when you've perfected the soul and you've worked on the consciousness aspect of things, there is the organization. It doesn't matter how crazy the physical world is. If you're at peace with your soul, you'll be all right. And that's what we're here to do, to evolve consciousness. So people think that the world is physical and we're here to do physical things. The fact is it's a spiritual world. Remember, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And the world is a footstool to step up higher to, your, to the soul aspect of things. That's why the world's an illusion. Remember, everything is energy. Einstein demonstrated everything is energy. Well, the, world's, the world is not what we think it is. Illusion doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Illusion means not what we think it is. It's a deceptive appearance is the definition of illusion. Well, we think it's physical, but it's not. It's a spiritual world that we're in. It's a spiritual world with a lot of spiritual rules, which all the prophets des describe very clearly what we're supposed to be doing in this spiritual world. One of the aspects of the spiritual world that we're in is the mirror. It's in every single religious philosophy that I looked at, some concept of the mirror. Okay, What is a mirror? Physically speaking, we're looking at a physical mirror. I'm going to see a reflection of myself. Okay, Spiritually speaking, we're looking at a mirror. What you're getting is a reflection of what your soul needs for its growth. Okay, We need to grow spiritually. And what you'll have is circumstances and chaos that happens to you that's teaching you where your soul is. And it doesn't mean we deserve bad things to happen. Did Jesus deserve to die on a cross? No. Is that what his soul needed to get his PhD? Absolutely. We all find ourselves in spiritual or physically difficult circumstances to teach us spiritual things. The, 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 your PhD, spiritually speaking, requires forgiveness. That means bad stuff has to happen to you. You can take a long time to learn that or a short amount of time to learn that. Well, whatever you're experiencing is a reflection of that which is the soul. Now, sometimes, as superposition uh, demonstrates, sometimes random stuff just happens. And it's certainly not fair in the physical world. 9-11 was all about that. It's nobody, nobody's soul was resonating with an airplane hitting a building. Okay? Nobody deserved that. And yet we're living in a physical world where, where stuff happens. And if you learn from this stuff, even if it's not directly connected to anything that you did, if you learn from it, your soul just grew. Important feature to the illusion, too, by the way, is that there are other worlds. The science demonstrates multiple dimensions. The world that we're living in, which we call a universe, is actually better thought of as a multiverse. And there's places that human beings or spiritual beings can go to when they die. That's an important thing. It's not just about this one place. 